Welcome to Weld.com. We've been kind of doing a new series here and breaking things down into some simple how-tos and everything. So if you find the content educational, please show some love and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. So we've been working on this piece of four inch pipe, doing some stuff about how to come off the bottom, all the uncomfortable stuff. We did some exercises. We did the TIG root, we did the TIG fill pass, we did, multi, we did a, a single fill pass with 332 low hydrogen. And then on one side of this, I went ahead and capped it with a weave with the 332 7018. And then on this side, I wanna come up off the bottom and run the last stringer up here for the cap. Some people like weaves, some people like the stringers. I like them both. I mean, there's situations where you have to use both. Another thing that was brought up was, uh, I think I was running about 80 amps, and I had a comment earlier on a post, and it was uh, something to the effect of, how do you even keep a, a 330 second lit under 90 amps? And I'm going, wow, well that kind of depends on the machine. Every, every, every machine's different. I generally try to run everything according to what the weld needs. You know, if I need to run hot, I'll run it hot, but I'm always looking at the pool. I'm not hung up on if it says 80, 85, 90. It's whatever the machine's doing, and you gotta remember if the, if the material gets superheated, you can turn the amperage down and still make the same amount of weld, to me anyway. I just kinda watch what's going on. I've got this at 80, it's an Everlast Power TIG 200 DV, and I have the dig turned pretty much all the way down because, again, I don't want this thing, you know, cupping out. I want this profile to flow with me. I'm looking for edges. Um, we'll do B-roll of what's going on here, and, and uh, we'll buff it out and clean it up and everything. So it's like the everyday weld. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do anything special here to to make it super pretty. One thing I am concentrating on is these tie-ins. I've got a little bit of uh, a bump here where I tied in, but it's clean. I'm not, I can't have any undercut along the edges here. So the whole demonstration is, you know, how do you get comfortable and come off the bottom? <clears throat> and I'm one to use half burnt rods when I come off the bottom because they're shorter, I can be more accurate. And the trick to, uh, the trick to running these is I'll take one of these that's half burnt and I'll scratch it on a file or I'll tap it or something so that it's clean, but it still has the flux around the end of the rod, okay? Nothing worse than one that's broken off and it's got about a, a quarter inch of, of wire and no flux around it. That's gonna make for a hard start and probably some porosity. And then the other thing for me is I don't wanna sit here and beat the crap out of this rod in order to get it started for the simple fact that, you know, again, I want to be accurate. If I'm over here banging away trying to get this thing lit up, and you guys can laugh about this, at some point you may miss and make an arc mark out here on the pipe, and that's not cool, okay? So, you know, I would, I'm would i gonna get down here, and I'm gonna strike the arc slightly above where I need to tie in, come in here and do a little circle or a little G move. G, how about an OG move? Uh, I'll come in here and try to tie this in and then take off and I'll be watching the edges and the top profile. Now, <clears throat> when I say the edges, this side over here, I'm gonna be trying to get to the highest point of this face right here. The other one, it's like I'm almost looking through the rod and slightly below. And that's a whole nother video. What do you, what do you actually look at when you're looking at the pool? And some of this stuff is like super critical. So, it, you can't be in the perfect position and see everything all the time. I've never been able to do that. I don't want to position and contort my old body like that. So you just got to get comfortable, trust it, practice. Practice till you get good and then drop your hood and practice a bunch more, you know? Practice till you can't get it wrong. So I'm going to roll this up slightly just so you can see where we're going here. Get the camera guy situated here and make him happy. We'll get welding here in just a second.
I'm real certain that the old camera guy over here is in good tight focus on this web pool. Although I think my electrode holder might be getting in his way here pretty quick. Using a very slight side-to-side -side motion here. Just trying to carry this pool up. Make sure I don't have any undercut. Okay, on this restart right here, I want to start slightly above. Let the rod get going, come down and bring it in and tie into the lowest part of this bead here. <clears throat> Try to make a good warm transition and blend it all in. Here we go. Seems like stringers to me have always been a little, a little harder to make super pretty versus uh, versus a weave bead. In any event, uh, yeah, I mean it's in there. Let me go clean it up and wire wheel it with a uh, power brush on the grinder. But here's a couple of important things: the tie ends are there. They're they're melted in, no porosity. Don't have undercut. Uh, Hey, it's an everyday weld, you know, I'm trying to, <clears throat> I'm trying to show that you can do this and with practice, you know, if I practice this all the time, I'd get better at it, but, you know, I'd, I'd blend them together like this right here, probably, and I mean, we could shoot this weld, bend it, I, I'm, I'm, I'll bet money that it's going to pass, I'll bet the camera guy's money, $100, that it'll pass, we'd go get the x-ray guy or something, but it's, uh, it's in there, and uh, let me go clean it up, I'll be right back. Uh, okay, I buff this off with the wire wheel on a on a uh, four and a half inch grinder, and I come back. That's not my arc mark because I didn't make one. Uh, that is a pit right there. Uh, again, we reuse this pipe all the time. That is some kind of a little pit ding or something. I didn't make that because I'm looking at the toe of this weld where I was weaving it up. I'm not making excuses. I'm pointing things out that you may see because of lighting, shadows, or something. Uh, I'm a little bumpy down here. I like this part right here, so I need to do some practicing myself. Actually, I need to turn back the clock about 20 years so I'm get smooth again. So, you know, get comfortable. Hot starts coming off the bottom. And, you know, if you're making them blend like this, like I did up here on the easy part down here on bottom, that's a good thing. When I was into pipe welding all the time, doing boilers and stuff like that, I swear my bottoms look better than my tops, you know, and that was, I just kind of took pride in that. I tend to underfill a little bit on bottom, so I could run hot and expect for that sag and that profile. And then I tried to overfill the top a little bit so that I had that equal amount of reinforcement all over the place. Again, very attainable. You guys need to practice up and uh, get comfortable, do these hot starts coming off the bottom. Any, anything that you're having trouble with, as far as the, the worst part of this, that's what you need to practice on and then the rest of it's easy, comes natural to you. Another thing on the, the amperage or whatever, I'm running the 332 7018. Some of you guys may like to run it hotter, that's fine, I, I, that's cool, you know. Uh, I, you know, I'll run mine to whatever the pool is doing. So, you know, 80 amps on my machine might be 90 on yours, I don't know, but one thing is for certain, 
I hate it when I'm coming up piece pot and I'm running so hot that my slag like vaporizes and this thing's cherry red and I still have a half a rod left. That, that's too hot to me. So anyway, the weld's the weld. You know, we're looking for the fusion and the reinforcement and the profile and everything. I hope this helped. If you found it educational, please subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And thanks for watching weld.com. Oh man, I wish I was young again. First time today.